Here we got a sneak cap. God damn it! No! Hey guys, I'm Ragnarok. Today we're gonna talk about the Rogue Beginner Guide. So this guide's basically for people who are new to the game, haven't played Rogue before, or people that have just played Rogue in the current retail version of WoW and haven't ever seen what vanilla Rogue is like but are thinking about playing it when Classic comes out. So we'll be going over what races to pick, what talents to choose, how the spells work, just some real basic stuff as well. If you're an advanced vanilla Rogue, probably not the guide for you, However, if you just want to learn a tip or trick, it might be worth watching anyway. Alright, so what's the best race for a rogue? Well, let's just go through some of the racials and the benefits from each race. So, 7 out of 8 races can play rogue, except for Tauren. Let's talk about humans. So, you get the increased bonus rep, which is super handy for those who want to main a rogue and get all the reputation with them. Human might be the better option. You also get the sword benefit as well. For Dwarf, you get your stone form. You also get your resistance to frost and the treasure finding. The treasure finding is more of like, could be handy while you're out in the world questing and leveling a lot. So if that's something that interests you, Dwarf might not be a bad pick. Night Elf is probably what I would choose because the Shadow Meld buffs your stealth. Um, same with Druids. Your stealth gets buffed by the Shadow Meld, making them harder to be detected. So Night Elf's probably what I pick. Also like the fact that they have a better dodge chance and the Wisp while dead and resistance to nature damage is all something that a rogue could take advantage of. Of course you've got the gnomes as well. If you like to be small and little, gnomes are a good pick. Racial wise though, not really as good as the other ones. Um, you get escape artists which is handy and you get increased engineering so if you're gonna roll engineering on your rogue, they might not be that bad of a pick. You've also got orcs which are probably one of the best ones you could go as they get the enrage which increases their damage dealt. Stun resistance as well so great in pvp. You've also got undead where you can become immune to fear, sleep and charm with your will of the forsaken effect. You can consume health of horse corpses. Again that could be nice in PvP or in the world. And you also get underwater breathing and shadow resistance. Again, here's another race where all four traits can be taken advantage of. And of course the troll, where you get berserking, increasing your attack speed, regen increased, damage increased against beasts, which is great for skinners and people want to farm beasts to level faster. And throwing a bow weapon skills increased as well. So trolls, definitely not a bad pick either. So what would I pick if I had to choose one from Horde and one from Alliance? So Alliance, it's pretty easy pick for me. I'd simply go Night Elf or Horde. I'd probably go Orc if I was gonna PvP a lot. Um, if I was gonna do PvE or be a skinner, I might enjoy Troll a little bit more for that extra beast damage and the Berserk. As soon as you create your character, you'll notice you have a few spells on your spellbar. One thing you can take off is attack. That's simply auto attack. You can simply right click on the target to initiate that. Your next spells are in Sinister Strike. That's pretty much your main ability that generates combo points. You've also got Eviscerate, which spends your combo point. You've also got a throwing weapon. You'd probably hardly ever use this unless you talent into it or whatnot, but it's good to have there just in case you want to pull something from a distance. It's worth checking out your spellbook as well, especially uh, for racials in your general tab. As an undead, I've got a spell called Will of the Forsaken, something you definitely want on your action bar, especially once you start getting feared, etc. You've also got other ones like Cannibalize, or your professions that you pick up will end up in the general tab as well. And also check out your spells. When you learn new spells from the class trainer, they'll appear in here. Simply drag and drop them on your action bar. Basically you want to use Sinister Strike and it builds up combo points up here. Each time you use it, you'll get extra extra combo points. And you'll notice your eviscerate spell will do more damage depending on how many combo points you've built up. So if I've built up five combo points, it will do a lot more damage than if I only built up one or two combo points. So on something like a boar here, I'll build up as many combo points as I could, but I'll also keep an eye on its health. There's no point going to five combo points if it's going to die before that point. So on these little boars, I'll probably just get about two combo points, maybe three, and then finish them off with eviscerate. If you've played Rogue in BFA or any other previous expansions, you might notice that combo points are attached to you but in vanilla they're attached to the target meaning if I build up three or two on this boar and I switch to another boar I have to build them up from scratch again no matter if I spend them or not so just be aware of that there's no point saving your combo points once the target's dead. Handing in quests that award multiple pieces of gear make sure you choose a leather option as it will give you much more armor than what the cloth option will. Leather is pretty much the main things that rogues will wear all the way to level 60. Keep a lookout for grey items that drop that are gear. Sometimes they'll actually be better than what you're wearing, especially at the lower levels. Sometimes you'll get quests where you'll need to use an item in your bag. For example, this one, we need to use the foreman's blackjack to wake up all the lazy peons that are sleeping.
Remember to see your the Rogue Trainer to learn new spells in vanilla. So make sure you have enough money to buy the new spells. At these levels they're usually about one silver each. Once you use stealth your action bar changes so you'll need to make sure you put those spells on your action bars, especially those stealth only abilities. Once you have the stealth ability, just be sure to use it. In vanilla, however, you run or walk very slowly in stealth, but the best way to use it is you sneak up behind them. God damn it. So we're just gonna sneak around here, nice and slow, and he won't even see us coming. There we go. And his huge chunk of health taken off straight away already. This is mainly how you'll start a fight as a rogue. At higher levels, you'll get stuns and other abilities that do a lot more damage when used in stealth. So just keep a lookout for those. Stealth is also less powerful. If you go up to a mob that's aggro or a red mob, they can detect you in stealth very easily, especially if you're in front of them like that. Being a night elf, you will have a racial ability called Shadow Meld, and it does enhance your stealth abilities, so you're less likely to be detected. Sometimes you'll have to run into caves, and it'll be full of hostile targets that will aggro from miles away. Being a rogue, you have an advantage. You can sneak past them all, go and get the item at the back of the cave, and then simply sneak out. So leveling as a rogue can be relatively easier than most of the other classes. Once you're level 5, you're high enough to get a profession. I recommend going straight to a profession trainer as soon as you're the required level, and that way you can get ahead of the curve with your professions as most people in the starting zone won't even have a profession until they actually get the quest to reach the town where they can pick up these new professions. For example I'm running all the way up to raise a hill and picking up quests on the way. I'll simply set my hearthstone there, pick up some professions and then go back to questing. As soon as I've picked up some quests that take me to raise a hill I can simply hearth back to save even more time and start questing there and have my professions leveled up with me the entire time. Once you're in the town make sure you set your hearthstone to the innkeeper. Simply go up to the innkeeper, speak to him, and make Razor Hill your new home. Click accept. Now when you use your hearthstone, it'll teleport you back here, saving you a lot of travel time. Also when you log out, make sure you log out at an inn to get rested XP. Rested XP accumulates when you're logged out in a rested zone, and rested XP gives you double XP. For example, if I log out here, it says I'm level 5, right? I won't get rested XP. However, if I go into an inn, I get these Zs or Zs. So if I log out here, it'll allow my character to accumulate rested XP. So when I level again, I'll level much faster paced. If you're not quite sure where to go to get your profession, Capital City is always the best place to go. The Trolls and Orcs, simply go north to Orgrimmar. If you're undead, simply go to Undercity. You start in this zone, you simply all the way, walk all the way to here. If you're a gnome or a dwarf, you can go to Ironforge, which is in this area. And if you're a human, you start here and Stormwind is literally right next to you, very easy to get to. Night Elves also have it pretty easy. As you start up here, and just down here is pretty much where you'll get the majority of professions, even then you can still walk over to Darnassus to get ones that may not be in that first town. Walking into Orgrimmar for the first time, you might notice it's a little bit different to the Orgrimmar you might remember back in BFA, but don't let that throw you off. Simply talk to a guard, he'll tell you exactly where to go. And you can simply look on your map, and there it is. The reason I'm getting skinning is because it's a very easy profession to level with leveling, especially if it's your very first turn. As every beast you kill, you can pretty much skin. Just remember to purchase a skinning knife from the supplies vendor before going out and skinning. Make sure you've got about a silver. You should easily be able to pick up the profession and the skinning knife with one silver. For your second profession, you can get leatherworking, tailoring, or enchanting, just because they're pretty easy to level with skinning. What I'd advise against though, if it's your first character, I would stay away from herbalism and mining because it's very difficult to keep this up with your level. You'll find that you'll outlevel the zone, but you'll have to stay in the zone for several more hours just to try and get your herbalism or mining up. I recommend leaving that for an alt to do. All right, so the final part of the guide, we're just gonna go over the leveling talents. These are just for leveling, not endgame. For endgame talents, to use a completely different set. I'll leave that up to you to research which one you want to go in. But for now, we've got two options for leveling. We've got swords and daggers. For the swords one, it's basically based more around the assassination and combat trees. It's more into finishing moves and combo points, returning energy, RNG, that sort of thing. If you use daggers, you'll probably want to go this build. The subtlety players probably will enjoy this build more as well. You can put points in whichever order you want, but most talent guides will have a specific order. I'll link the wowhead guide in the description below, so if you want to follow the optimized order, you can follow that. You can, Or you can simply select your own talents for level it's not quite as important they just think that this is the best as far as damage goes and ease i'll just go over a few important ones that i think are really good for the subtlety one this just straight up a damage increase for your opening abilities like backstab and ambush you also got one that gives you a lot more hit which is a really big thing because at the start of the game it's very
very hard to get hit gear, this will make you miss a lot less often. You also get the Dalaga specialization and the dual wield specialization, which is important once you want to wield daggers. You also get the adrenaline rush ability. It's got a big five minute cooldown, but very, very nice to use and something that good rogues will probably want you to get good at. You've also got Blade Flurry, which is another cooldown. It stacks really well with some racial abilities like the Orc racial, for example, and the Troll racial. You can use these together in a macro. One last little thing is um, rogues get pickpocketing, which can be really, really fun as well. Most things won't give you that much money for it. Like you might get like a couple of copper, maybe 10, 20, 30 if you're really lucky. At endgame, you get a roughly one to two silver per mob in level 60 zones. Um, but the nice thing about pickpocketing is sometimes you can get items that you can't actually get anywhere else in the game, like patterns or recipes for professions. And you can also get some other nice little things like gems and cloth and potions. Thanks for watching my guy guys. If you thought this guide was helpful to you, leave a like and a subscribe. And if it wasn't helpful, if there's something I missed, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll also have a link in the description below for the Wowhead guide. There you can check out talents, rotations, stuff that's a little more advanced as you level up higher. And of course, check out the M game content guides I'll have in the description as well for those players who want to really optimize their rogue once they hit level 60. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.